Close your eyes and imagine we went back in time to the 17th century in Japan. We are walking through the streets of Edo. The sun is shining, there are artists around working on their beautiful pieces, and you can hear people enjoying the kabuki play in the distance. Life is good. Suddenly, your eyes rest upon this gorgeous woodblock that pictures women dressed in the most intricate, beautiful kimono of the latest design. You look and look and look and feel that you just have to go inside to speak with the merchants and purchase one for yourself. Yes, what you have just seen was an example of the 17th century fashion advertising. Hi everyone, welcome to DMFA Digital Marketing for Asia. My name is Joanna and I am a marketing manager working here at Sofax Telecomino. In today's video, we will go back in time and talk about the very beginnings of marketing in Japan. When did the marketing history start? How did it look back in the 17th century? And can it be that we still use some of the marketing techniques and strategies today? Well, funny you ask, because I have answers to all of these questions. So let's go. First, let me explain what Edo period is. The Edo period, which is also sometimes called the Tokugawa period, is a time in the history of Japan between 1603 and 1867. This is the time when Japan was under the rule of the Tokugawa shogunate and the country's 300 regional daimyo. Daimyo were kind of like feudal lords. They were leaders of very powerful warrior bands and they were kind of like ruling over the Japanese prefectures. Emerging from the chaos of the Sengoku period, which was when the country was in a civil war. The Edo period is known for time of economic growth, strict social order, isolationist foreign policies, stable population, perpetual peace, and popular enjoyment of arts and culture. Many historians say that marketing in Japan began in the Edo period. Let's have a look at a few of the techniques Edo merchants used to attract uh, customers into their stores. The city, Tokyo or Edo, became very busy during that time. There was like a lot of people moving into the city because it was, there, there was lots of opportunities there, work opportunities and just entertainment and, you know, the city. Local men merchants were trying to come up with new ideas for, you know, attracting customers and bringing them into their stores. One thing they did was they started placing this kind of like signboards in front of the shops so it was either like wooden boards or curtains they either had letters on them or some images that i uh, would allow people who are passing by immediately recognize what kind of business it is so for example there was like a candy shop they had like a vase that said ame ame means sweets or there was like a big wooden brush in front of the ink store so i think those boards i mean it's not so much different from what's happening at the moment like every store right now has like a board either with their name or some sign in front of it and you know tokyo is so well known from those neon signs everywhere so i think this actually began over 400 years ago where people started using signs to let customers know what their business is about and so they will go inside before Edo was the time where art was blossoming in Japan and Edokos, which are the people of Edo, really just loved their entertainment. Various events and shows really attracted a lot of people and large gatherings of people were yet another opportunity to like advertise. Let's talk about the first known printed advertisements. We had two types of advertisements, Hikifuda flyers. Hikifuda flyers were kind of like um, advertising pamphlets that were given out to people. Okay, the, the first Hikifuda was introduced in Edo by Echigoya in 1683. So Echigoya it was like a first ever department kind of store. I think it started off as a kimono clothing store. And it became very, very popular because they were very good at marketing and advertising their services. And they started using the Hikifuda flyers. Using Hikifuda flyers, Echigoya advertised the fact that it was bringing a new cash-only prices as listed policy into play, which in turn led to successful sales promotion. So they would give people the flyers and when people would go into the 
store, they would find the pieces. The pieces had price tags, which was also quite new. Like before, uh, like items didn't have price tags. Like the merchant or like the shop person would tell you how much it is. So it was the first time they would assign like a price and that's what you would pay. And also they would um, tailor it for you. So if the kimono was a little bit too big or something, something, they would just tailor it on the spot for you. So this was a very popular um, place. And I think they had, even during that time, they had, they opened stores in multiple locations in Japan. So not only in Tokyo, but also in Kyoto and Osaka. And then the second one was called Nishiki-e. Uh, and Nishiki-e was a popular form of media with pictures depicting the latest manners, customs, and fashion. So those were like bigger format. They were kind of like posters that people could put in the window of their store. It would, let's say, feature the latest kimono. So people would look and be like, oh my gosh, that's great. That's what I want. And then, then they would go inside of the store and purchase one. Then let's talk about the first ever, I think we could call it now like product placements in history. During the Edo period, kabuki was a very popular form of art. Kabuki is a classical form of Japanese drama. Kabuki theater is known for its heavily stylized performances, the often glamorous costumes, and for the elaborate makeup worn by its performers. It was especially popular during the Edo period and we could say that the very first ever product placement advertisements that you can see, for example, in TV shows nowadays, were actually done during the kabuki performances. There is especially one play that I wanted to talk about. So in Japanese, this play is called Tsukeroku Yukari no Edo Sakura. In English, it means the flower of Edo. This is one of the 18 great kabuki plays. Play takes place in the Yoshiwara district, which is a pleasure district and tells a story full of romance, blood revenge and honor. But during this play, actors mention actual names of stores and products that exist in real life. So you can say that they would do product placement while they were performing on, on stage. While we are talking about kabuki performances, we cannot forget about the actors. Kabuki performers were quite similar to present day influencers. Much like today's social media advertising, the kabuki performers promoted this word of mouth advertising. This is a print of kabuki actors standing at intermission with a large sign advertising tooth powders, which were called edoko and kotoko. There is a printed phrase below it that says, please try it and tell your friends about it. That's the first kind of like influencer marketing, I would say, done by Kabuki actor like over 400 years ago. There were also first instances of cross-media marketing campaigns happening during the Edo period. There is one product in particular that was quite heavily advertised across like loads of different media and this product was called Senjoko. Senjoko was this kind of like a face whitening powder. We can find examples of Senjoko being advertised on Nishiki e posters in different text pamphlets that I mentioned before. Senjoko also appeared in many illustrated books as well as in poetry. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think about the very beginnings of the Japanese marketing? Were you surprised that actually so many of the marketing techniques that started 400 years ago are still present in the marketing we are doing today. I found it quite interesting uh, and I really would like to know your opinion so please don't forget to leave a comment down below. As usual don't forget to subscribe to our BMFA channel and if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one very very soon. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye!